The first Harry Potter book was written in 1998 by someone everybody hates now. I understand why, but I don't want to get depressing, so I'm going to say it's because of her hair. She kind of looks like a Karen. <laughs> Harry Potter and the Red Glowing Rock. In the UK, this book is called The Sorcerer's Stone, but here it's called The Philosopher's Stone. I can't decide which to use, so I'm going to call it The Red Glowing Rock. I tried to use Portmanteau, but I couldn't come up with anything that didn't sound like the name of a strip club. This is Dumbles. He has a longer name, but I can't remember it. His co-worker is Minerva, who can turn into a cat. There are numerous possibilities for porn there, but let's not think about any of them. They leave a baby on this doorstep. They don't even ring the doorbell. In my experience of leaving babies on random people's doorsteps, you always ring the doorbell, and you always run away. This is to ensure that the baby isn't eaten by stray dogs. It's common sense. That baby grows up to be Harry Potter, the boy who lived. Doesn't seem like a great qualification. If you put I'm the boy who lived on your resume, I think the job interviewers would ask a few more questions. His parents were killed in a car crash, so he has to live with his abusive aunt and uncle, Karen and Kevin, and their son. Despite doing all of the chores, including cooking, Harry has not tried once to poison them. They get a letter addressed to Harry. Naturally, they take it from him. Turns out it's an invitation to a boarding school. If you want to get rid of Harry, why don't you just take this opportunity? It seems like you don't even have to pay tuition. They try to avoid the letters by driving away, but they keep coming. This is one of the advantages of having owls deliver the mail. The other is that you can shoot them down for sport and get free Golf Digest magazines. Then some tall guy named Hagrid shows up and kidnaps Harry. He explains to Harry that his parents were actually killed by an evil wizard named Voldemort. For wizards, saying Voldemort's name is essentially like saying the n-word. They go to Diagon Alley, a pun on diagonally, which is something I realized in 2017. You see, Harry's parents had a lot of money, and because the wizarding world doesn't have jurisdiction in suburbs, Harry was actually broke until today. This is a loophole you can exploit in real life. If you're a rich white person living in the suburbs, the police actually can't arrest you. When they go to the bank, they take a package. Can someone explain to me how you pay interest on a paper bag? Harry goes on a train to Hogwarts, a school for people who can't name things well. There are a lot of weirdly named things in Harry Potter. Like this kid. His last name's Weasley. And no, he has nothing to do with weasels. They eat magic candy together. The candy is magic because it doesn't give you diabetes. When they arrive, they are forced into an induction ceremony where they put on a magic hat and sacrifice a newborn. The hat tells them who they're supposed to be friends with for the next six books, and everyone decides, yup, this is okay. I'm gonna explain every single student at Hogwarts. Harry Potter has the power of being the main character, and nothing else. He's kind of an idiot sometimes. Rod Weasley has the power of having too many siblings. Wizard birth control isn't very good. There's a joke about a spell called Fetus Deletus, but that spell actually just makes pencils longer. And it only works on pencils. Hermione has the power of being a nerd and being a girl. That checks two demographics. Let's see if we can check any more, thought author lady. So she decided that she was going to try to make Hermione black. Despite this. And this. Draco Malfoy is a villain? I don't really know. He might just be some asshole. Dean Thomas is the son of that Supreme Court justice who's guilty of sexual assault. No, no, the other one. There's a wizard school in the U.S., but they cut funding to it so that the government could afford to raise their own salaries. And finally, Seamus Finnegan is an Irish stereotype. So a troll escapes and immediately heads to the girls' bathroom. Nothing weird there. Harry gets onto a Quidditch team. What is a Quidditch? Well, imagine if you were playing American football, but you were flying, and the balls were trying to give you concussions instead of the other players. It's Christmas, and Harry gets an invisibility cloak. Wait, why? You'd think that they'd have different religions in the wizarding world. This has left me with one possibility. Jesus was a wizard. So Harry finds a mirror that makes you see what you want most in life. Do you think that if the older students look into it, they'd see them having sex with other students? The gang thinks that this guy, named Snape, is trying to kill Harry. Makes sense. He's creepy. That's the only attribute that child murderers all share. So they try to report this guy to Dumbles, but he's not there. So they take matters into their own hands. But this guy stops them. I don't know who that is. Anyway, they kill him, and then they go look for the red glowing rock. But first, they have to get past a dog, so they kill it. Then they have to get past a plant, so they kill it. Then they have to get past a door, so they kill it. Then they have to get past chess, so they cheat. Then they have to get past poison, so they cheat. Harry gets the red glowing rock from that mirror earlier, then kills a teacher. He gets out of legal repercussions because he is a child. Bullshit. Then Dumbles awards free points to Gryffindor for killing someone. Harry Potter and the Plumbing Contamination. This book is basically the template for every Harry Potter book. Everyone hates Harry because of factors out of his control, students are dying, and instead of the school's administration doing anything, they put a 12-year-old in charge of fixing it. We should actually try this in real life. When there's a school shooting, send out a 12-year-old in a bomb suit with a knife. Actually, new sport idea. So Harry's letters have been intercepted by some elf slave. He decides to sue the elf because intercepting mail is a felony. But that doesn't pan out too well and Harry gets sentenced to house arrest. Then Ron breaks him out and they crash a flying car into the school. 
This book is set in 1992, so no one thought about the implications of that. New Defense Against Something teacher is Gilderoy Lockhart. He's a skeezy rich author, which means that he's the first teacher who is definitely guilty of sexual harassment. He starts a dueling club with Snape. Knowing who Snape is, I think he only agreed to do this so he could kill Lockhart. Snape makes a snake show up, and Dumbles tells him that they actually can't kill animals because of a uh, rule with a partnership with Peter, so they make Harry kill it instead. Harry hisses at the snake, so everyone assumes that he's related to the evil wizard who invented Slytherins. I don't get it. My cat hisses at snakes, but I don't assume that she's related to an evil wizard. Throughout the book, Harry experiences auditory hallucinations. Then a cat gets frozen. You see, there's this monster that Joe Slytherin, the guy who invented Slytherins, put in a dungeon. He did it, I assume, to extort the rest of the school. When you look at it, you die. But if you look at it in a mirror, you only get frozen. So the gang decides to frame Draco. They kidnap his friends and use a potion that lets you change bodies so they can get into the Slytherin room. Drinking game, take a shot at this potion whenever it's used. See how long it takes until you turn into someone else. But they can't find any good evidence, so they just give up. Harry finds a book written by Tom Riddle. The book tells him that Hagrid tried to kill the cat, so he calls the cops on Hagrid. Then Hagrid sends Harry into the woods. He almost dies, and while he isn't guilty of freezing the cat, he is guilty of trying to kill Harry. Hermione gets frozen. Harry and Ron blackmail Lockhart into coming with them through the bathroom into the dungeon. What's really sad about that is that that exact sentence has probably been said before. Tom Riddle explains to Harry how Tom Marvolo Riddle is an anagram to I am Lord Voldemort. Could you not have picked a name that requires the use of I am in the anagram? He also explains how he manipulated an 11-year-old girl into doing what he wanted. Nothing weird there. So then a bird shows up and uses the power of plot convenience to save Harry from death. Then Harry stabs Voldemort's book with a snake tooth. I wonder what the thought process that he used to decide to do that was. That works somehow, despite being super fucking random. Then Dumbles awards free points to Gryffindor for killing someone. Harry Potter and the lack of prison reform. Harry is hanging out with his shitty family and is trying to get his uncle to sign a piece of paper. Instead of forging his signature, Harry opts to try to kill his uncle's sister. Great idea. I've killed the sister of everyone I've ever wanted anything from. Then Harry decides to run away. You know, the thing every kid decided to do. But Harry gets hit by a bus and wakes up in Diagon Alley. Harry gets told about how this guy called Sirius is trying to kill him. Instead of explaining motivations, they decide to just send him on a train with Sirius' childhood friend. The prison guards show up and they're looking for Sirius. Just like real prison guards, they're really into beating up children, so they attack Harry. Then Sirius' friend saves them. He introduces himself as Remus Lupin, the new defense teacher. He actually does his job, unlike everyone else up until this point. Hagrid is the new animal shit teacher. He teaches everyone about how bird horses work, and Draco just doesn't give a shit. Imagine the satisfaction you would get if the person in your group project who didn't listen to anything you're trying to explain to them was just fucking mauled by a bird horse. You know what you did, Devin! At Christmas, Harry can't go to the office Christmas party because he couldn't get his uncle to sign that piece of paper. So two of Ron's brothers give Harry a map of where everyone in the castle is. Instead of using this to commit crimes, he just uses it to break into a Christmas party, and it gets promptly stolen. Draco's dad is kind of a Karen, so he demands that they execute the bird horse. But because of the rule about the school scaff killing animals, they have to send in a government representative. Harry, Ron, and Hermione watch the bird horse die, and then they run off to see a dog bite Ron's leg. Are wizards getting vaccinated for rabies? Do wizards even know about rabies? Are Harry and Hermione talking about the risks of getting rabies and Ron's like, Rabies? What's that? So the dog turns into Sirius. He and Ramus decide that they're just gonna kill Ron's rat. That doesn't work. If you try to shoot a rat, you usually miss. So they hit Ron and he has to go to the hospital. The rat turns out to be some guy named Peter Pettigrew. He framed Sirius for riding out Harry's parents to Voldemort, and this gets Sirius sent to prison. All the shit about Sirius trying to kill Harry was just a straight-up lie. Turns out Ramus is a werewolf, and he just bolts. Twilight taught us that vampires are hot, but no movies have yet taught us that werewolves are hot. Hashtag werewolf positivity. Actually, according to Author Lady, werewolves are supposed to be an HIV analog. Fun fact, no one ever thought about that idea until she brought it up. Peter escapes. Harry, Sirius, and Hermione are saved from the prison guards by their future selves. We'll go back to that. And then Harry and Hermione leave Sirius behind for some reason. They realize that they have to save their past selves, so they're like, Yeah, it's rewind time. And they fix everything. Save the bird horse and send Sirius to a green screen so they can trick everybody into thinking he was in prison the whole time. Then the time machine is confiscated, so they can't use it as a future plot point. This time, Dumbles doesn't award free points to Gryffindor because they haven't killed anyone. Harry Potter and the murder tournament of 17-year-olds. Harry and his friends are at the Quidditch World Cup. Then Voldemort's entourage cause a terrorist attack. To be honest, I don't care about sports, so I'm just going to cut that part out of the video. Harry arrives at school. Dumbles orchestrated a murder tournament with two schools that have better names. In order to apply for the murder tournament, you have to put a slip of paper with your name on it into this fire hazard. The whole last book is named after it, despite having less screen time than Karen's teenage son. 
But it's okay, because you have to be at least 17 in order to compete. The new Defense Against Spiders teacher is Mad-Eye Moody. He teaches Harry and co. how to kill, torture, and mind control spiders. But it also works on people. The three people picked for the murder tournament are Victor Crumb, a professional Quidditch player who's still in high school, Flower, and some Hufflepuff guy named Cedric. He has no relation to the wizard from Sophia the First. The fire hazard realizes that it can't pick a Hufflepuff, so it also picks Harry. Dumbles calmly asks Harry what the fuck is going on. No. No, no, don't pay attention to what you're looking at. So Hagrid shows Harry that dragons are involved in the murder tournament. Probably should have made him sign a non-disclosure agreement. Then Harry has to steal an egg from a dragon. Cedric tells Harry that he needs to have a bath with the egg. Harry has sex with a ghost, and after she tells him to jump in a lake, so Harry jumps in the lake. But he needs to breathe underwater, so this student, I don't... Who the fuck is that? Gives Harry steroids. The spectators can't tell Harry that he's supposed to go to the lake but Hagrid can tell them that there's dragons. I'm starting to think that Hagrid's breaking the law. Then Harry breaks the rules. Final challenge is a maze full of cool shit. They don't appear on film, which is why they aren't in the movie. It ends in a tie between Harry and Cedric. Voldemort doesn't want a tie, so he tries to kill them both. Cedric dies, which means that Harry wins. But Voldemort's back. And Moody's actually the doctor, pretending to be Moody, who's been on the shape-shifting potion for months. Then everyone had the idea that trans people should do this. Away! Harry Potter and the government cover-up. Harry and his cousin get attacked by prison guards, so Harry kills them. Then he gets arrested. Dumbles gets appointed as his lawyer, and to get Harry out, he claims self-defense. This is Luna. She can see dead horses that only she and Harry can see. Why? Well, if you see someone die in the Harry Potter world, then you can see those horses. Hallucinations are a common coping mechanism. Meet the new Defense Against Nothing teacher, child abuser. She makes a bunch of rules about what the students are allowed to do. She's also trying to cover up Voldemort. It's like a conspiracy theory about a government cover-up, but actually true. Because of this, she cancels defense class. So, because no one is learning about self-defense, Harry decides to start a fight club. He needs a location, though. It turns out that that guy... Who, the, who is that? Found a room that only appears if you, or the plot, need it. Dumbles gets kicked out of the school after an inappropriate incident with a 15-year-old girl. To try to remove any doubt that this was a false claim, Author Lady decided to make Dumbles gay. Then Child Abuser crashes the fight club. After Harry refuses to give up valuable information, she decides to torture him. So they kill her using centaurs. Everyone goes to the government to steal classified documents about Harry. That's a really dumb idea. Just make a public information request. Then all of the time machines are destroyed so that they maybe can't use them as a future plot point. Sirius dies. And then Voldemort is caught on video, so the government has to say he exists now. Except they don't, since when did the government care about evidence? So they impeach the president, and they get a new one who isn't a Voldemort truther. Harry Potter and the Invasion of Privacy. This book has a lot of romantic subplots, but I don't really care. So the book starts with Dumbles and Harry tracking down some guy called Slughorn so he can replace Snape. He's pretending to be a couch. There are many spells in Harry Potter that can be used for pretty fucked up sex things. This might be the worst one so far. They teleport around that one city in the UK, I can't remember what it's called, the one above Unlondon. So they show up at school. In the first day of potions class with Slughorn, they learn about drugs. Harry wants the drugs, so he cheats using a textbook with notes in it. It's written by the Half-Blood Prince. Hermione wants to know who that is, so they Google it and find out that it's Snape. Mystery solved. We can move on to the next book now. Harry Potter, and except that Dumbles wants to know if Voldemort asked Slughorn about murder when he was a kid. Harry tries to go to a dinner party with Ron's sister. Nothing weird there. Harry decides to just ask Slughorn. He says no. So Harry decides to drug him. What is a horcrux? Just fucking Google it, my. It's the 40s. Google doesn't exist yet. Okay, so if you murder someone, and then you put a part of your soul into an object, then that's a horcrux. Okay, I'm gonna go do that. No, wait! Voldemort put seven pieces of his soul into whatever was closest when he murdered someone. These people were in turn whoever was closest when he found the thing that he wanted to make into a horcrux. Sounds like a paradox, and it is. Two of these horcruxes were the book that Harry stabbed in the basement and some ring Dumbles found. The gang find out that someone's trying to kill Dumbles. Who could it be? Well, your first instinct is Draco, and this time you're right. So Harry tries to use a spell he doesn't know anything about that he learns from Snape's book. Harry and Dumbles go to destroy a horcrux that's kept under an extremely specific set of protections. They return to Hogwarts, and Snape kills Dumbles, because Draco is too much of a pussy to do it himself. Turns out that the Horcrux was actually fake. If you went through all the trouble of getting the fucking thing, why would you even plant a fake? Imagine how funny it'd be if someone else went through all of that trouble to get it, and found nothing. Harry Potter in the two movies. So, Harry and all his friends drink the shape-shifting potion so that they can all pretend to be Harry. Again, don't think about the weird sex uses for this. Everyone runs from Voldemort's cult while pretending to be Harry. The witness explains to the gang what was in Dumbles will. He left to Harry a Quidditch knickknack. This ends up being the best gift. He left to Hermione a book. He left to Ron the opposite of a flashlight. One of Ron's brothers is burying Flower. The government is overthrown, so the wedding tent burns down. After deducing that child abuser has the real Horcrux, they decide to drug government officials, pretend to be them with the shape-shifting potion, and then rob a government official. However, they can't destroy the Horcrux yet. Horcruxes can only be destroyed with a thousand-year-old sword that Dumbles just has for some reason. Ron leaves because he feels like he's an unnecessary part of the squad. 
and he's right, but then he comes back because the plot requires him, and then he destroys a horcrux. But before he does, Hermione reads Harry an expository bedtime story. Once, three siblings were supposed to die, but cheated death by doing simple magic. So in exchange for pointing out this grave oversight in his system, the Grim Reaper gives them each a magic gift. The sister wanted the most powerful wand in the world. The Grim Reaper interpreted this as an actual wand instead of a vibrator, so she kills herself. The middle child wanted to be with his dead wife, so the Grim Reaper kills him. Finally, the youngest child wants to be invisible, so he uses it to play hide and seek, so the Grim Reaper can't find him. Harry's wand gets destroyed, making it very easy for some random ass vigilant to arrest him. They get sent to Draco's house, where Harry steals Draco's wand. Believe it or not, this will be important later. Then Voldemort's girlfriend kills that elf slave from like 12 minutes ago and the gang leaves. Voldemort steals Dumbles' wand. Plot twist, this is the same wand that the Grim Reaper made for the sister in the story. One of the horcruxes is kept in a bank, so the gang uses the shape-shifting potion to get into the bank. I think I made this wrong. Then they cause some hyperinflation. In order to get out of the bank, though, they have to give the sword to a goblin. They find it again, but the sword is a fake. Why is it so easy to make fake replicas of magical objects? Well, I know why. It's so that author lady can make a fuck ton of money selling them online. The next Horcrux is at Hogwarts, so they go there through the back of the bar. This bar is the hottest underage drinking spot in Hogsmeade. The Horcrux is in the room that the Fight Club was in, so they destroy it. Voldemort decides to kill Snape. Why? You see, the special wand passes from whoever owns it to whoever kills them. Because Snape killed Dumbles, Voldemort kills Snape. As he's dying, Snape tells Harry he needs to die because he's a horcrux. So Harry goes out into the forest so Voldemort can kill him. He uses the power of the Quidditch knickknack, which has the rock the Grim Reaper used to kill the brother. He dies, and he has a conversation with Dumbles about something. I don't know, I went to the bathroom during this scene. Harry undies so that the eight-year-old's reading don't have to watch the main character die. The final Horcrux is Voldemort's pet snake. This person? Who is that? I think he was just an extra in the movie. Uses the sword to kill the snake. Now Harry can kill Voldemort, except he is master of the most powerful one in the world. Except no. You see, before Snape killed Dumbles, Draco disarmed him. So Draco gets an assist kill, and because Harry stole Draco's wand, Harry is master of the wand. I'm not going to argue with that, that's just brilliant writing. Harry, Ron, and Hermione send their kids on the train to Hogwarts. When Warner Brothers made the Harry Potter movies, they wanted to milk the series, so they split the last book into two movies. Author Lady liked this idea, so she stretched the epilogue scene into a whole other book. But everyone hates it, just like Author Lady.